We're here in the Julia Ann Square District of Parkersburg, historic area of the city. And I'm here with Norman Smith. His wife, uh, Judy, is at an appointment. She may be back before we're finished. Of course, here with Marcia. And we're here to uh, just talk about the history. We've been talking about oil and gas and different things. Well, obviously, the people that worked in those industries had to live someplace. And when Parkersburg was established, they, this was one of the first areas, because as cities work, you start closer and then as the city goes it gets bigger and bigger so this is one of the oldest parts of the city of Parkersburg and so uh, thank you for joining us uh, Norm tell us Welcome. about your lovely home here uh, when it was built and some of the things you can tell us about it okay uh, it was built in 1885 by a lumber baron he owned the Parkersburg mill and if you're familiar familiar with uh, uh, 3rd Street Deli that was his mill, Parkersburg Mill. Oh. So it's Caswell, William Caswell. So that's okay. the original building? Yes, yes, it's, it's original. And Mr. Caswell built that house on the corner there for his two two uh, daughters. Is that the brick home? Yes, it's brick. It's, okay. uh, he built that house. Again. He built that for his two, so two daughters, and he built one on the left of 10th Street down here. It's gone now, but it's a, it's a duplicate of this one. And he built that for his two sons. But he owned all of this property all the way to 10th Street. And then uh, uh, he, if you, on the house here, you see that very, very top, and we'll go up there if you choose. They were told that he built that so he could sit there and watch his logs come down the Ohio River, down to his, down to uh, the third, third Street Deli where his uh, lumber mill was. He eventually sold it uh, to General Jackson, but uh, all of this was uh, Mr. Caswell's carriage house. Um, in the early 1900s, I understand that uh, all of this was his. Uh, the seller here had a buyer, and the buyer said that they would buy that lot if they could include the garage. So where that fence is, on that side is uh, the neighbor's garage, and on this side is our garage. And the same thing with the between the second and third dormer up there there's a wall and that belongs to the neighbor and the rest of it is ours but it hadn't been touched for like 70 years so as soon as we got here we decided that we'd restore it so uh, the cupola was uh, sideways and we re we replaced that we uh, redid the entire roof and then we added, uh, we knocked a hole in the north side and added a four car garage. So uh, uh, we built the fence here and uh, we'll be able to go in the backyard and see the okay. rest of it. So let me ask you this. Okay. Was this, would this have been typical for this thing to be? A okay, originally when the house was built, this was basically a sidewalk, but the previous owners uh, had a bed and breakfast, so they rocked it. They had rocks here, oh, so. I didn't know if this was like where a horse and buggy would have like pulled into. I don't know that it was that wide to start with. Is there like a horse hitch out here someplace? Not here, That's no, right. there's some around, but not I here. But, but we, we, put, we put the lights in, uh, uh, we bricked it. So I know that when you and your wife moved in, you've modernized the property uh -huh, a yes. little bit. Some of the things that we see here in the yard, like the lamp post and the fence, are those what we would have seen during that time period or very similar to it? It's possible that there may have been a lighting, a lighting system out here, you know, but it would have been gas. Uh, there, was, there was no water fountain. We just decided to, to do that. And uh, uh, you see this fence, you, this same type fence uh, was in all the yards all the way down. And we were told that they fenced it off so when the cows came down the street in the 1880s uh, that it would keep them out of the yards. But we, we put this in and uh, did that. We actually, so we were so excited to be able to, to buy this that I started fill it, uh, doing the base. I built the base here before we ever closed, you know. Oh, wow. So, uh, but then uh, I was also able to run everything under the, under what is now the the uh, driveway. So how, it, how long did it take for the restoration process? Well, the uh, previous owners bought it when it was really in, in bad shape, 
and uh, uh, they they were here eight years and constantly constantly uh, restoring so uh, I had said that mr. Caswell uh, he, he built in 1885 he, he lived two more years he died and they they uh, brought his they had his funeral in the front parlor and they uh, understand these are well these these windows uh, opened up and they brought him through the windows and out here in the hearse in his funeral when they wrote up uh, his epitaph they said that uh, this house uh, with its finish its finish is unlike most of them in the state and uh, probably the most elaborate that was the wor their wording so uh, he he did a a great job and uh, that's the reason that we share it because uh, he did a great job uh, he was a great person he uh, he helped establish the Republican Party now not only in Parkersburg but in West Virginia so I'm very intrigued by these is this part of the no. original house no no we we uh, bought those uh, just a few years ago okay from uh, an antique shop in Marietta and uh, thought they'd be nice here well they so, look nice thank you they look nice thank you so this is very nice this looks like a beautiful I can see the way he built this beautiful to sit on the front porch look around the neighborhood but yes. and obviously you know this is not the furniture that was here this is not supposed to be a historically accurate place but right. is this would this be typical style furniture along the porch for people to sit or probably if it were available at that time we actually bought it from a fellow in Florida. Uh, he it's handmade, and uh, we had it shipped up here, and they shipped it to Belpre. And at the time, we had a PT Cruiser, so I was able to put everything you see, all of this, in the P PT Cruiser with one trip. So, and by the way, the, everything folds up. I was gonna so say, that, you're a master. <laughs> you got all this stuff in. It. Yeah, it, it folds up. Now, what about your your mailbox here? Is that something that would have been? Uh, it might have been similar, period? but we, okay. we it's a reproduction. Would it have been on the porch, it, or would it have been? Well, most of these houses that have a drop box, just a drop in the doors. We thought about that, but we didn't want to bother the doors. So, can we go inside absolutely, and take a tour of this beautiful home? You're you're welcome to come in. And by the way, two Christmases ago, we had two weekends, we had 1,400 people come in. Oh, wow. We had our, we have our tour at Christmas, and then the, the ladies' club contacted us, and we let them the following week, and we each had 700 people. And it was just one of several homes on the tours. But um, Mr. Caswell basically has three, three uh, kinds of wood. Um, the doors are cherry most of the doors uh, all the floors the main floors uh, there are two rooms uh, up, upstairs and the kitchen are uh, oh, are uh, pine but uh, patterned oak and in, in each uh, stairwell is walnut and you see the you see the uh, window here uh, and during that era there was a company out of New York called Tiffany. Uh, they did uh, about a dozen homes in the district here. And this is supposed to be the largest one. It's like seven and a half feet, and it has the most jewels, uh, most pieces. And they have a matching one over the front door. Okay, so behind you, over the front door, they, they match the match. Uh, Now is this light fixture, is this original? Okay, the light fixture is original. And um, we were told during that era that if you built a home, uh, there's usually a little newel down here. Mm -hmm. And then uh, if you walk into a home and you see that they have a burning light here, that they had taken the newel and cut it off and burned, their, burned the newel with a note that you knew right away that there was no mortgage on that house. This owner 
actually owns the house. Oh. So that so uh, apparently uh, uh, he must have paid cash for the home, and he uh, put the light here. So originally it was all gas. The fact is the the gas line is still there, and the electrical line goes right through it. Okay. And when we we're speaking of original, the light behind me, this is an original too. And the previous owners found this when they were restoring it. They found this light abandoned in the carriage house. And so a few years ago, I told Judy that uh, that if if the electricity was still alive up there, I would connect it. So I took it down and it, I checked it and it, it, it is. The previous owner just hung it up there. But you see, these, these were gas, these three here, and these were electric because this guy early on invented something called electricity. So when they built the house, they said, well, you know, gas is like forever, but electricity could be a fad and it'll be gone and we'll still have a light. So when, uh, when we restored it, I decided to make it appear that these were gas and this is gas and then uh, the electric line was actually still in there, but uh, I had to enlarge the other holes to, to uh, uh, put the wire through because gas lines are very, very small and it's difficult to put a electrical line through one of those small. So all the woodwork I see, the floors, all the, the trim, is this all original? Everything is. The ceilings, uh, and I understand that the, one of the reasons that they, they uh, had such wide uh, sections here mm -hmm. is when they, when they uh, built it, in all of these rooms, I understand someone had told us that they were all painted white so they would reflect light in every direction. So um, that's basically why, you know, why those are so wide. But the sliding doors, uh, everything you see was original. Doors slide. And uh, walls, ceiling, everything was original. It just just been redone, basically. Now, would it have had this wallpaper? This is kind of intricate it's, wallpaper. It's, it's possible. Uh, I don't I mean, think. Obviously not this uh, right, wallpaper, but right. a similar style of embossed. I, I think yes, they used a lot of wallpaper at that time. Uh, this is anaglypta, and it uh, you can buy it at most stores. Uh, when we restored the house on Ann Street, uh, we decided to put this type of uh, wallpaper in the bathroom. And I basically did the entire bathroom for like $20. It's very inexpensive. It's very light. Uh, I had I put it up and I painted it green. And my wife was in Florida at the time. And I called her and I said, we made a mistake. It was terrible. It looked terrible. But a second coat, and this is what it looks like. So if you ever do that, you have to put at least two coats. It's easy to work with. It's just regular wallpaper. Mr. Caswell. had artisans from Europe to put in seven fireplaces. So they did all the work there. They did all, all, all of the, everything you see there. The, that, uh, uh, that's, this is the, the front parlor uh, fireplace. And uh, as I said, there are seven. Now do all the fireplaces still work? Okay, none of them are really connected as, as they were then. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I imagine they had coal, but now uh, since we have central air, air and heat, uh, we took all, the, all, all of the other. We uh, appreciate places out. history, but we also appreciate air conditioning. <laughs> That's right. That's very much Right, so. I understand, I understand. Very much Okay. So. We'll go, this, and this is the back parlor. And for what typically would happen in the parlor? What was the, you know, people say, well, this is a parlor such and such. They'll make reference to different things that would happen in a parlor. In that time period, what would a parlor be used for? Because we don't call it that. Right, right. Basically, we understand that this, this back parlor would be today, today's what we call in Florida, Florida room. It's, this is the family room. Okay. But you see these, if, uh, uh, say in the winter time, uh, they, there was a guest that came in and uh, they were doing some kind of uh, business work. They would close these, right, close these uh, doors, sliding doors, uh, light up the the heat, 
and then do whatever business they had and so then the when they left this would be for the guests and business out right, front right and then right. the family would be back here That's and the right correct parlor. correct and i have to tell you too that this is something interesting too all of these these uh doors these sliding doors Give me just a second. Uh, both sets of sliding doors have little keys here, and uh, early on, uh, early uh, I guess it was in the 19, maybe 30s or 40s or whatever. This was a boarding house, and every room you'll see as we go through has numbers because each family had their own number in their own room. So. We're just amazed that both of these side sets of sliding doors had little keys, and then we'd think that some kid, you know, would stick it in his pocket. It's hard, you know. That uh, I'll let you let you feel it. It's, there's there's so, and there's a there's a key here and a key over here, and they were hinged so that so that when you lock the door, you can push the hinge there, and it slides right into the wall. So so feel that. Many wouldn't that be, know that wouldn't that be interesting key. to just, yes. just stick that in your pocket? But it's here after 130 years. Oh, wow. So, wow, that's amazing. Okay, and this is the, oh, I don't want to put it in my pocket. Look, I almost put it in my pocket. See, <laughs> you almost did what you said. Yeah, but uh, you put it in there, and then you push it down, and it hinges. This is the back parlor. Is this the, who's this guy? Is that the guy? No, no, we, we, uh, I didn't know if you had any adopted, uh, no, the, this one right here, this, this, no, no, that's not the one. The, the one over here is Judy's great grandfather, okay. either great or great grandfather. So he's a nice looking guy. The others, uh, we just adopted because they fit the house. Okay. And while you're there, I want to show you the back parlor. Oh, now, this would be the formal dining room. Oh, yes, we'll go through the there fireplace. in a minute. Here, this is the fireplace. And Mr. Caswell, we don't know a lot about him, but we often wonder what relationship he had, if any, to Mr. Longfellow, Henry Watchworth Longfellow. Because apparently this, this, um, fireplace was designed around Mr. Longfellow's picture. And what makes it more interesting is that Longfellow signed it right here. So this piece is signed. So we feel that's, that's why he built this around this, this uh, picture. So if you don't mind, we'll go from here into the music room. We call it the music room. When we bought the house, it, it was a pool room that Mr. the previous owner had uh, uh, every, every year. He had different uh, games and uh, tournaments. I came over and watched one, but I never I never joined so, in. Now, so but we tended to. Actually, you want to stand on that side of the, go on the other side of the piano, Marsha. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. And then if you so, wanna, you can say, you know, so in a typical time, you know, this would be where everybody would come and listen to people it, singing it, and whatever. So, All right, we're, so we're, uh, we're not sure. Uh, we just made it into a music room because we think that, you know, it's neat to have one. Not sure what they, what they did. But I will show you while we're in here, when Mr. Caswell built this house, uh, you see this window here? Mm -hmm. There was an exact duplicate of that what you see there over here and a few years ago we took the window out and put it in an elevator we're not at the point where we must use it ourselves yet but we do use it for tours people who can't climb stairs but this goes down to the sidewalk up to this first floor and up to the second floor so we're real pleased with uh so that way it's what accessible to people. Yes, right, right. And, and as I said, we use it occasionally. And if you're in there and you get in trouble, you just push the button and uh, you get help. So looking around now, the instruments that you have here on display, there's one particular instrument that really catches my eye. What is this? Okay. Uh, I'll, if you have time, I'll show you some of these. But 
uh, everything you see in here works. Uh, there's a gentleman called Thomas Edison who invented the Victrola, and this was one of the early records. You see the I little grooves? Play? Yes, you want me to play it? Oh, I would love would it. Would you? Okay, yes. Yes. Let's play. I'm so glad. I've never heard one play. My dad had a uh -huh. 78, but I've never heard of. Well, you've, you've uh, seen the movies of the uh, Little Rascals. Uh -huh. Yes. This is the exact same thing. That, that, that's the sound that they have. And uh, these horns, uh, some are small, some are larger. But uh, the larger the horn is, the louder it goes, of course. Let me disconnect this And here. so that is completely mechanical, so there's no electric right. parts. Absolutely, no, no. that's right. You wind it. You wind it, turn it on, and then it has a little needle and it plays. And an earlier one was this. This was an earlier one. And I don't know if you want to uh, sure. show this to everyone. We, we, uh, we were in Ybor City at a street fair, and the fellow had this one. And Judy saw this little guy right here that... Uh, And she loved the concept, and she told the guy, oh, I love it, but I'll wait until I'll find a bear. And he said, ma'am, he said, I've been, say, I've, been, I've been collecting these since I was nine. They didn't make a bear. Sears Roebuck sold these at the turn of the century for a dollar and a quarter. And what you, you, you put this whole little contraption on any kind of record player, and then you turn it on, <laughs> okay, and then while we're standing here, many years earlier, and this one's over a hundred years old, this one plays, has a, you wind it like this, and it has a, these are all pins. Oh, hang on just a minute. Okay. If you want to take this, hold the light on. Hold the okay. light so I can see. See, this it's one over. reminds me of a large music box. Well, it, it is a large music box. It plays eight songs. It'll play this one and jump and then go to this one. It'll do that eight times and then jump back. And it, all, all these little pins go through a comb down here. And I'll play it so you can see what it sounds like. So this is a music box jukebox, essentially. I guess. <laughs> yes, you could say that. Okay, now and they they designed it so that if you want to, you can you can you can turn these off, and if you turn this down, it'll it'll only play as part of the pins and it becomes a harp. I'll show it. Now watch. I'll turn it down. Now it's a harp. Or you can turn it back on. You can turn it back on. And, and put the fins back. But how they figured that out a hundred years ago, over a hundred years ago, I don't know. That is incredible. It is. 
is very incredible. Okay. And there's more. Wow. This one is mid 1800s. We happen to be at the right place at the right time in, in Florida. In early, uh, mid 1800s. This is called a uh, sewing desk slash piano. So uh, we were told that during that era, most women had one goal in mind, and that's to marry a man who could take care of them. And so what she would try to do is try to impress him to the point that he would ask her to marry him. So she could say to him, look, I can make all of our clothes here. It's not electric, of course, but it has all the, uh, everything you need to make things. You, you, you have your needle and your thread and so forth. And she could also make herself look pretty, but it would really impress him if at the end of the day she could show him her talents by playing the piano. Oh, wow. Now, we've, we've been doing these tours for years and years. Never have met anyone who'd ever seen one or heard of one. Uh, this was made by Homburg. They later became Steinway, and they just made pianos only. So Judy plays a little bit. That is amazing. But uh, uh, we, when we got back, after we purchased it in Florida, Judy went to the Internet and, and put uh, Googled antique De sewing desk slash piano and found one at the Smithsonian. That's the only place she could find one. But we were fortunate to be at the right place at the right time. When Judy spotted this, we spent the day going back and forth and negotiating. The, the lady who owned it, he, the, 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 the owner of the shop would call her. Would you do this? No. Would you do this? Finally, he said, look, I will, if you'll take it, I'll pay the tax on it. So we said, okay, put it in the cruiser. So we ended up that with it. That is amazing. We ended up with it. I've never seen anything like it. No, neither have I. No, we've never heard anyone that had. Now, what about so, the piano itself? You mentioned it. Okay, a few other there. things you here. Anyway, is this another, assuming this well, record. this one, this one, we we uh, had probably about five years ago. Uh, bought it. it. It was, I think, made in Parkersburg or the area, and it was like in the 30s or 40s, but. Uh, one week ago, we gave this to a, 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 a friend uh, because he he found another he found a, a more modern one that looks that, that looks like it could, would fit in here, but it's a player, oh. you know. So so you you get your phone and you, it'll play by itself. So anyway, but it is old. This is over a hundred years old. It's a symphonium. And here, have you ever, have you seen these? On, online. Okay. Never they, seen they, one. We bought this, uh, found it on, online years ago, and the fellow we bought it from gave, sent us about a dozen of these, but if you'll feel that, that's, that's what actually makes the tune. Because these, these holes are punched in the exactly right spot. This is one song, we have about a dozen. But, what happens is that this, as this turns, it hits these what they call stars because they're five pointed, and these are combs. It has two. This is a double comb, and it plays both of these at the same time. And don't don't tell me how they figured that out. But anyway, uh, you put it on here, and if you pull this out, and it looks like it's warped. But it has little wheels here. That's okay. Little wheels here to keep it from ruining the metal here because if it were straight, it would scratch the metal. So it only touches here on those stars. But uh, you wind it, pull this out one time, it'll make one revolution. Now think before radio, TV, any of that, someone, and it pops occasionally because this is metal, but it doesn't hurt anything. But you can imagine them inviting, having a party, inviting him over to, to dance, and then you can see them dancing. And it would, as long as you keep this out, it would keep running until you have someone to, to that turn is it. Okay. Okay? Wow. Okay. One of our latest ones is this little box right here. 
but that'll stop in a minute when it makes one turn. But years ago, Judy and I are docents at Henderson Hall, and years ago we were there, and they had one of these, you know, and then we played it, and Judy just fell in love with it and said, I have to have one. So we spent a few years looking for one and then found this one. That I, I found it on the internet. I called the fellow and it said, I think that's what we want. Could you play it? And he played it, you know, and, he, and I said, that's great. How, how do I get it? And he said, you have a charge card? So mm -hmm. anyway, it's from the, I think they call it the uh, Magical Mansion. Uh, anyway, this fellow has a huge, huge home um, and he has over a thousand music boxes. That, that's his his business. I think it's called the Musical Mansion. But anyway, it's uh, it's in Maine. So we uh, we after a few years we went up there and got some of these others. Mm -hmm. This got local, but it's about 140 years old. And in 1989, uh, this this uh, gentleman. Um, fixed it up actually you know he it says it that that uh, uh, that that's when he he worked on the bellows and anyway uh, these are separate songs and these are called cobs for obvious reason but how do you decide where to put these and how to get them in there but this is song this song is the home over there but I put one on here and I'll I'll let you guess what it is but Anyway, I learned to play the organ in about five minutes. So here's the way it goes. Yes, it is. But if if someone came to you and said, "I want you to make one of these for me," how much would you charge? Oh my Lord. Where would you start? Oh. <laughs> I couldn't forget it. I couldn't do it for any any reason. That's now, and what year did you say that? This in, in 1959, 59. it was restored in 19 in 89. Restored in 89. But underneath, uh, I think it's like 140 years old. Okay. And we can imagine some some. Uh, minister traveling way out in the woods and then he advertises that he you know that this organ and maybe he lets the kid turn it on all shit and just this one this one is is modern but we found it in in florida at a at an antique shop a few years ago uh, so it plays it'll play regular songs or christmas songs and uh we just thought it fit in the room this changes the lights change and all so we we liked it. Is this a Thomas Kincaid scene? I believe it is, yeah. It yes. looks like his work. Yeah. Well, this is just an amazing one. Okay, I'll show you one more. In the mid-1950s, this mosque was made. Of course, 1950, it's still pretty old. And this mosque, and feel how heavy it is, I'm not going to let it drop. Oh my! But isn't it heavy? That's it's very, very heavy. heavy. Very heavy. But you can imagine if you're imagine f these four ladies sitting around at a table playing cards. One of them reaches over and pushes this, and it was invented to distribute a certain item. So she pushes it, and each lady just reaches over and gets one from whatever it is, and puts it in their mouth, strikes a match. So it's made to it was invented to distribute cigarettes, but we don't smoke, so Judy put chocolates in there. So, but it'll open up, you get your cigarette, and it'll close it back up. Very that way you cool. can hide your cigarettes, and no one would know. That is unbelievable. This is the coolest stuff. Well, <laughs> thank I, you. I've never seen anything quite like some of this stuff. I know you have quite a collection of Fenton Bells. Here. Yes, uh, Judy, one, at one point, I thought I turned it off. At one point, uh, collected those, and we. Which, of course, they don't make anymore because Fenton's not in business. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, 
just put lights under there to give us a, a little Beautiful. different. We go into the dining room. This this table is from the Greenbrier. And uh, when we bought the house, we bought a new set. And then this one of Judy's friends said, I, f I f found this table from the Greenbrier in an antique shop and it's begging to be in your house. This table and three chairs here and three chairs over there from the Greenbrier. So we traded a new set in on this one. And one thing about in here, uh, this was handmade by Bischoff. Okay, it's a, it's a company. Now, Bischoff actually worked for Blinko a Glass Company, and then he established his own. So, Governor Underwood, Cecil Underwood, was um, his, uh, he admired him to the point that he made this, presented it to Governor Underwood. We don't think it was ever used, but uh, uh, many years ago, um, we had a picture made with Governor Underwood. Uh, Modisit, Rick Modisit was running for mayor here, and we helped him a little. And uh, we took this picture, and it was on Judy's mom's uh, refrigerator for years. And then we happened to be at the right place again, and uh, this went to to uh, Governor Underwood's estate, and then we bought it from the estate. Okay, we'll run through here. Seem to be at the right place, the right time. Or what? <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. From here, we go into the butler's pantry. Okay. Just get some beer. Okay. 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 Butler's pantry. No, I. You. What you've shown us is fantastic. So it's, you're all good. Okay. The, show us stuff. Okay. The butler's butler's pantry. The butler worked with a, the the uh, cook. He was in charge of pots and pans. And by the way. His room basically was upstairs. Here, there are two rooms up there for the servants, but uh, these are original. Uh, all the drawers and the the uh, doors. Uh, and uh, notice coming in here, the the floors are pine because most the most of the time no one was in here except the butler and the cook. So they'd close those doors and all the people would stay out there. And there's no use using expensive wood to be in where the cooking and stuff is. Right, right. But now I guess it's the, it's just as expensive if you know, hard to find is as, as oak is. But and then this goes into the kitchen. Now the, the kitchen would not have looked like this at all. But notice the ceilings, there are 10 ceilings. And they the reason they put 10 ceilings in, in the kitchen area is that if there's a fire in your house, it's usually from the kitchen. So that keeps it from going, spreading throughout the rest of your house. But uh, this room was actually gutted and someone came in and did all this. But the floor is original. Uh, we put this in here. And, uh, okay, we'll put this way and come back. So, uh, if you, there was a window right here. And a few years ago, we took the window out, put in the door, and built this little room here. So Judy in Florida took a, she, uh, uh, took a course in bonsai and ended up with about 12. Uh, some of them are pretty interesting. This one here is a bullhorn acacia that she bought in Florida a few years ago. And she keeps trimming it. It would probably go to the ceiling otherwise. But these are little horns and they're very, very sharp thorns. And from here, we saw this building from the front. So right here at this corner, that was Mr. Caswell's carriage house. And we added a four-car garage and tried to match everything. We, were, we did the entire roof here and then we, we did this one to match. So we will go out there. <coughs> 